That's great. That's great. You sure if I... It's okay if I stick around. I got nothing else to do. <laughs> <laughs> Did you have to say you had nothing else to do? Could no. you say you have pressing matters? No, no, things that you need to do, but Late Night with Conan O'Brien is so important, it's you really must important. stay. And I need the money. I hear you get extra. <laughs> there's no extra money now. Oh, there's not? I'm oh, not. wait, 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 yes, yeah. We'll take up a collection. All right. Okay. Folks, Another Catholic reference. Yeah. <laughs> Very nice. Very nice. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> They're gonna get me in trouble with my mother. Uh, stay tuned next week, folks. We got some great guests coming up, including Sarah Michelle Geller, Buster Rhymes, John Bon Jovi, and Richie Sambora, Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers, Sam Donaldson, much, much more. So watch those shows. Huh? And the best part, yeah. the best part is that Sam Donaldson's gonna be singing with Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers. Really? Yeah. Watch it. It's oh, gonna be wow. incredible. All right, my next guest uh, started his career in The New Kids on the Block. Then he went on to act in The Sixth Sense, Band of Brothers. He's now starring in the new NBC series, Boomtown. Please welcome Donnie Wahlberg. Good to have you, you here. You don't mind if I stick around, do you? No, you know what? We, we have three. Yeah, he's got nothing better to do, he says. Well, you know, we have three Catholic boys here now. Oh, really? There you go. There you go. Wow. All right. The only three in Hollywood. <laughs> <laughs> We're all here together. And he was at the Emmys, Hollywood. too, man. I was at yeah. the Emmys, too. Um, and I enjoyed you, too. Oh, thank you very much. You know, we have something in... No, stop. No, you That's got to really got to stop. No, no. You know what, Conan? That's really got to stop. You were so great. Thank you. You, you deserve oh, yeah, applause but... for the next six months. Well, that would really? be boring for people at home. No. Uh, you know, we have something uh, in common, which is we, we sort of grew up in, a, in the same area in, in Massachusetts. And I remembered when I was uh, living in Boston and the new kids hit, it was huge. It was yeah. just this huge experience. And Joey, from the New Kids, McIntyre, he bought a house right next to my parents' house, like a couple of streets over. Right. And I would pass it, and I would see all these girls camped out inside his house. And I remember thinking, I want those girls camped out outside my house. <laughs> Someday it'll happen. Yeah. It never did. Uh, that must have been intense for you, too. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. It's funny, though. Uh, it's funny that you say that, you know, because we used to get like flack from people who would see the girls hanging out you know people would drive by my house and see the girls and start screaming obscenities you know guys would drive by and right. throw eggs at halloween just jealousy and stuff. yeah but it's nice to know that you know beneath the jealousy there are people like you who really wanted that for themselves you know? <laughs> yeah it's really cool you know this is a this is a true story like two christmases ago i ca i came home and my mother at one point said there's some girls hanging outside the front of the house. And I was like, yes, this is great. I've always wanted this. So I went out and I was like, uh, girls, please, I need my privacy, you know. I'm a person, leave me alone. And they said that they were on their way over to Joey's house and that they had just stopped off for a second. That, that actually happened to me before. I had girls and, you know, they're, they were always outside my house too. But one day I went out and I said, uh, I said, hey, how are you doing? And they said, hey, we just wanted how to get to Jordan's house. <laughs> I was like, all right. All right thanks. thanks a lot. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Did you have to say that? Right, right. Now, uh, when you guys first started out, you were playing anywhere you could get an audience. You were yeah. playing prisons at one point. Is that true? We, we did. You know, it's, it's one of the great myths. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> I was going to say, I wouldn't suggest that the boy bands today go to a prison. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the, uh, I don't know how long <laughs> Instinct's going to last in prison. Uh, not long. Uh, the, the funny thing is, you know, people think we were this huge overnight sensation, but we really weren't. We were doing for about four years whatever we could do, and we did three prison appearances. Uh, one of them, my older brother, was in the prison, and he was the promoter <laughs> for the show. <laughs> it's true. Is that true? It's true. It's true. It's true. Uh, uh -huh. he's, he's, it's nice he's, to know somebody there. You no, know. you know, it was, it was pretty remarkable. But, you know, we used to be, you know, obviously we, we hated to get booed anywhere. But to go into a prison, I mean, God, if you fail on a prison concert, you, you might get raped. You might get murdered. You, there's no telling what could happen. So right. what we used to do is we would come up with strategies to win the inmates over. And what we did the first time is uh, I smuggled in a couple of cartons of cigarettes. 
And so at the end of the, the show, I just started throwing them out and I handed it out to them, the guys in the group and we all threw them out and the inmates went crazy. And the word spread throughout the prisons in Massachusetts <laughs> about the, uh, the new kids, you know, they would come and throw cigarettes out. And uh, so, you know, everybody wanted us at their so jail. you didn't really need an act at that point, really. <laughs> you could just, it's the new kids the block and their cigarette shooting machines. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, wow. Now you have you have children yourself now. I have two. Yeah. Two kids. Yeah. Are they performers? Are they? Can you see it in them? Like, do do they want to perform? Well, I have a one year old who who uh, I don't know with him yet, but my nine year old, uh, my son Xavier, he plays guitar. Uh, he doesn't really know about my musical days. He knows a little bit about it. Um, but I think he heard about it the first time he really knew about it. He heard Eminem singing a song about us and said the new kids sucked or something. And he was like. Dad, weren't you in that group? <laughs> Why did he say you sucked? Right, right. I was like, we did, son. <laughs> oh. No. No, 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 that's a joke. That's a joke. Uh, but, uh, you know, he plays guitar, and he actually, he's, he's musical taste is much different than mine. He listens to, like, death metal, and uh, I, I don't think it's because I'm a bad parent. I think I'm a pretty good parent. He's not revolting or anything, but he just listens to, like, Slipknot and... Uh, Slipknot's huge. Yeah, Slipknot's I mean, he loves them. Kids, yeah. I mean, and it's like, I don't know, they, like, have these bloody masks and all this weird stuff, and he's like, Dad, they're cool, they're cool, and he's learning all their songs. So I try to teach him some older songs, like uh, he's learning Stairway to Heaven now for me, and... and uh, uh, smells like Teen Spirit by Nirvana for me. He does these oh, things. Oh, that's good. For so me. You're, you're instructing yeah. him that, right? There's well, I more wanted than to just... know where all these bands came from. They all came from Led Zeppelin, and Jimmy Page is like the greatest guitarist of all time. And I want him to know the history of it, not just get caught up in the new stuff. When you were a kid, what did you want to be when you grew up? Did you? What did you aspire to? Did you have a plan? Because some young people that make it know, okay, I want to be a, a, in like one of the biggest bands in the world. Did right. you know that? I, I, you know what, I. I wanted to perform. I mean, in, in, in my early days, I started doing theater in school. I started the band in my freshman year in high school. So I was always performing in one way or another. But I really could never imagine the magnitude of, like, the success that I would come across. I mean, my idea of success was, like, buying a motor scooter, like a Honda scooter, and, like, being able to have some nice clothes and pick up some girls and maybe get free pizza at the pizza shop down the street. And they say, hey, Donnie, good job. You know, here, have a free slice. You know, I mean, I couldn't even comprehend leaving Dorchester. I mean, I was there my whole life until the first time I went on tour. I had never even left the city of Boston, you know? So, I mean, my, my understanding of what fame was was really small. I got it. The whole time I was living in, in, in Boston, I never knew it was Dorchester. I thought it was Dorchester. It is Dorchester. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, now, you are the second youngest of, second youngest of how of, many? Of nine. Oh, my God. Well, yes, a true Catholic family. So you make my, f I, I was one of six, and now I feel like a small nuclear family yeah. of six. Conservative, six, yeah. nine. Nine. How did it, I mean, in our family, it was oldest beats the second, oldest Same beats thing. the third, Same you know, thing. so it all works its way down. Is that how it worked in your family? Yeah, and I know my brother Mark, he's not going to want me to say this, but it is true. The oldest would always beat up the next youngest, and Mark was the youngest, so he beat up nobody. And, you know, he's sort of the, got the tough guy reputation, but... Sorry, kid. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so even uh, sisters were beating him up. My sister Tracy was like the toughest one. I mean, she had this kangaroo kick. When any of the brothers would fight her, she would like go back on the bed and <laughs> kick. <laughs> And nobody could get to her, you know? Nobody could get to her. That's She's like a tough. WWF move now. It was, yeah. it was. It's called the Dorchester kangaroo yeah, kick. Yeah. Uh, you know, I got to mention uh, Boomtown, I think, has had the, the best reviews of any of the new TV shows. You got to be excited about that. We're, we're so excited. I mean, uh, and just, I mean, we're blown away by the reviews. I've never experienced good reviews, at least not in my music career. And to, uh, <laughs> to have them... For this show, which I'm so proud of and so happy to be a part of, I mean, we have a wonderful team of actors and writers and John Avnet and Graham Yoster, the executive producers, they're just phenomenal. I mean, and just, I mean, it's just, I can't even put into words how excited I am to be a part of it. Well, congratulations. Thank you deserve you. it. Boomtown airs Sunday nights at 10 on uh, NBC. Donnie, thank you very thank much you. for being here. Donnie Wahlberg, we'll be right back with Good Charlotte. Stop on a dime. I, uh, that's our show. I do want to thank all my guests. Donnie Wahlberg, so cool to have you here. Thank you very much for stopping by. He's a good man.
Big thanks he had. Apparently he had nothing better to do than stick around. Mr. Martin Sheen, thank you, sir. Our thanks to Good Charlotte for performing. Jimmy Vino, the Max Weinberg seven section for Last Call with Carson Daly. We'll see you Monday. Have a good weekend. Then I let a match and spit out all the grain alcohol at the TV. <laughs> Just then, there was a knock at the door, which startled me because of all the grain alcohol. It was Nick Nolte, fresh out of jail. <coughs> and I guess in jail, your head gets out of proportion to your body. <laughs> Uh, anyway, <laughs> he, he yelled at Max and said, quit drilling peepholes in my room. <laughs> then he punched Max's head off <laughs> and kicked me in the groin. <laughs> then he took off with Max's groupie and folks, it was an amazing night. I got to tell you, we had a good time.